1996 is a 2021 adventure game from French developer Digix Art. In it, you play a teenager trying to escape the fictional country of Petria, which is currently suffering under the iron fist of a right-wing dictator named Tyrak. As you make your way to the border by bus, hitchhiking, or walking along the hot and dusty roads, you'll meet a cast of recurring characters with different relationships to the current status quo. From John the trucker secretly supporting the resistance, to Sonia a newscaster gleefully broadcasting government propaganda, all the way to Stan and Mitch, two bumbling armed robbers trying to finally make their big score. The choices you make as you travel impact their lives and may even play a role in the growing unrest in the country. What makes Road 96 so interesting is that you don't just play one teenager, you play several of them. Each round of the game sees you guide a teen to the border over approximately six randomized vignettes, climaxing with a border crossing. Afterwards, you begin with a new teen playing six different vignettes. Chronologically, each new sequence begins just after the previous one, so the choices one teen makes will have an effect on the world the next one must traverse. This can be seen in minor ways, such as leaving graffiti in a cave used by numerous crossers, but also in the attitudes of recurring characters. How one teen treats people in one round can affect their decisions in later rounds. The choices might soften people's hearts or further radicalize them in one direction or another. Many games have political themes about oppression and resistance, but I really appreciate the way Road 96 handles it through successive border runs within the same dynamically changing world. Where other games have a single protagonist who ends up being the most important person in the world in regards to the political atmosphere in their settings, Road 96 instead makes most individual people pretty insignificant in the grand scheme of things, particularly the player character. Not only are you a runaway teen with four dollars in their pocket, you don't even have a name. You don't even really have a face. From a pure game feel perspective, this powerlessness adds a deep layer of tension to every interaction with the adults you encounter. But more interestingly, this individual powerlessness shines a light on the effectiveness of collective power. Any single teen you bring to the border does not change the system, though they may influence this or that individual character. But the group of teens you end up shepherding as a collective becomes fuel for a much larger movement within the game. Even when your individual player character influences major events in Petria, it's almost always in partnership with other people. For example, in one scenario I played through, a police officer whose car broke down brought an incarcerated teen onto the bus I was riding. The rumor among crossers is that teens who are caught by police are disappeared into secret labor camps and literally worked to death. With that in mind, I was able to whip up the other passengers on the bus and de-arrest the teen. However, the time this concept stood out to me the most was in a cave nine miles from the border. All sequences will eventually end up at the cave. It's like a little breather before the climax of the border itself. The cave lies behind a beautiful waterfall, and the walk along the river to find it is a welcome respite from the anxieties of the road. Inside the cave, other crossers and your previous player characters can leave graffiti messages, rest in a makeshift camp, and even stack little stone cairns as if to make future crossers feel a little more at home. A few sequences in, though, I discovered something. A loose rock in the cave where someone had left a few bucks for a future crosser who might need it. At the time, I was flush with cash thanks to having stolen someone's ATM card, so instead of taking the money, I left 20 bucks and continued to the border. On my next sequence, when I arrived at the cave, I saw a piece of paper sticking out from under the rock. It was a note, and it said, I'd heard about this rock from other teens and thought it was just a myth. Thank you to whoever left money here. You helped me cross. And it just hit me really hard. It suddenly dawned on me that each of these playthroughs in the context of the game wasn't just beating levels to get to the next chapter, that instead this was a world of other people with hopes and needs, and that my individual actions had collective consequences. That I was part of a lattice wherein each strand contributed to the strength of every other strand. 
And it really flipped the idea of powerlessness on its head in that moment. My teen couldn't topple the government, couldn't bring down the border wall, couldn't shut down the propaganda coming from every radio and television, but what she could do was lend her strength to someone just as vulnerable as she was and get them a step closer to freedom. What she could do was participate in a larger network of vulnerable people who lacked resources individually, but who could fill in each other's gaps as a collective. She couldn't alleviate all suffering in Petria, but she could alleviate someone's suffering and give them hope. Hope they could spread to others until it reached a critical mass. It reminded me of a passage from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. In a different kind of game, leaving $20 under a rock for an anonymous migrant might gain you some karma points or a reputation bonus with a companion. The system, the UI, would tell you that you did a good thing, but experientially, it might not feel like you actually made a difference. However, Road 96 does not abstract away solidarity. It lets you experience the ways that your treatment of other people and your commitment to communities of vulnerability spirals outwards. In real life, we don't always have that perspective. We have this one life that proceeds along our own subjectivity, so we lack a kind of God's eye view of how our choices travel outward along our relationships. We don't see how acts of selfishness influence others to be selfish and contribute to patterns and soon cultures of selfishness. Likewise, we don't see how acts of kindness influence others to be kind and in turn create rituals and then cultures of kindness. In real life, we often see acts of altruism as markers of someone's individual character, as something you do to be a good person. Similarly, we see acts of selfishness as simply personal failings, and to the extent that we decide to locate that selfishness within a larger system, often we simply shake our head and say, what goes around comes around, as a kind of curse more than a certainty. But Road 96 reminds us that our actions are rarely individual. One person acting can, intentionally or not, harmonize with others acting in similar ways, and that harmony encourages others to join the chorus until suddenly hundreds and thousands of people are in resonance with each other. Road 96 reminds us that we walk trails blazed by those before us, and that our footfall becomes an endorsement for those who will come after. Road 96 reminds us that systems are both upheld and toppled by people acting in concert, whether any of those individuals actually understands their connection to the others. Road 96 wants you to consider your actions. Who are you in harmony with? Which trails are you reinforcing? Do your actions align with those preserving what is old or building what is new? What will the world look like when the people who act like you shape it? Who do you make strong, and who do you make weak? You are always in solidarity with someone. Road 96 invites you to make sure that you're happy with who that someone is.